Today we're reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 18, Perfection of Renunciation, text 30, 63, page 4, 747, 747. <laughs> Sena Ete Cha Si Tata Guru Iti Te Yanam Akyatam Uya Guya Taram Maya Bim rim shai tad ase shi na Yate cha si hata guru Iti te yananam aksharam Guyad guyad taram maya Rim shaita hase shaina Yata shai hase tata kuru Word for word Iti Thus They Unto you Yanam Knowledge. Knowledge. Akyatam. Describe. Describe. Guya. Then confidential. confidential. Guyam taram. Still more. Confidential. confidential. Maya. Maya. By me. me. Vishrisha. Deliberating, I thought on this. Asheshena, fully. Yata, as. Itasi, you like. Yata, that. Guru, perform. Translation per report by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti to present the Swami Srila Prabhupada. Thus I've explained to you, now it's still more confidential, deliberate around this fully, and then do what you wish to do. Please repeat. Thus I've explained to you, now it's still more confidential. Deliberate on this fully, and do what you wish to do. Purport. By Srila Prabhupada. The Lord already explained to Arjuna the knowledge of Brahma Bhutta. One who is in the Brahma Bhutta condition is joyful. He never laments, nor does he desire anything. That is due to confidential knowledge. Krishna also disclosed, discloses knowledge of Super Soul. This is also Brahman knowledge. Knowledge of Brahman, but is superior. It is superior. Hear the word Atecha Si Tata Guru as you like, you may act, indicating that God does not interfere with the little independence 
of the living entity. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord has explained in all respects how one can elevate his living condition. The best advice imparted to Arjuna is to surrender unto the super soul seated within his heart. By right discrimination, one should agree to act according to the order of the super soul. That will help one become situated constantly in Krishna consciousness, the highest perfectional stage of human life. Arjuna being directly ordered by this personality of Godhead to fight. Surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the best interest of the living entity. It is not for, for the interest of the Supreme. But before surrendering, one is free to deliberate on this subject as far as the intelligent goes. That is the best way to accept the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such instructions come also through the spiritual master, the bona fide represent, representative of Krishna. Mom Vishnu Vidaya Krishna Vistaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vinanta Swami Namani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gorvani Pastani Nevase Shunivari Paskatrani Stani Sri Krishna Shaitanya Babu Nitananda Sri Adrita Gradhar Sri Vasani Gaur Bhakti Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari <clears throat> so this verse is uh, says Thus, I will explain to you this knowledge, still more confidential. Deliberate on it fully, and then do what you wish to do. So, Balde Vijabhushan also wrote a commentary on this verse, which you can read, which may give us a little more understanding of the verse. The Lord now concludes the scripture. Thus, in the manner just spoken, E.T., I have declared to you this knowledge. Jnanam. The scripture of the Gita, which is the means of understanding karma, bhakti, and jnana. Jnana means that by which something is known. It is more secret than the scriptures which teach secret mantras. It should thus be kept secret. After reflecting on this scripture fully, and say Shaina, do as you wish. The intended meaning is, reviewing this scripture thoroughly, your ignorance will be destroyed and you will be steadfast in my words. So this is the Concluding, we're coming to the Bhagavad Gita. It's finished in 77 verses. By here, Baladev Vijayabhushan says, Lord now concludes the scripture. And it says that it's a secret, but it's confidential. So, if something is confidential, then it shouldn't be spoken to the general mass of people. So one may ask why we are distributing Bhagavad Gita in mass quantity. Because... Um, if it's confidential. But one time Ramanujacharya, his guru, gave him a mantra 
and say that if you chant this mantra, it will give you liberation. But don't tell anyone. So Ramanujacharya was a Mahabhagwat, a pure devotee. And pure devotees have compassion for all the fallen conditioned souls. So he <coughs> went on the rooftop of the temple, he called all the townspeople and said, this mantra, you chant this mantra, it will give you liberation. So his guru, he disobeyed the orders of his guru. So his guru was angry with him. He said, why have you disobeyed my order? Now you have to go to hell. He said, Ramanujacharya said, well, if this mantra you gave me is going to liberate everyone, then I don't mind going to hell if it actually has the potency. So his guru actually embraced him and said, you're more advanced than me. So he was pleased with him. In the same way, when Lord Titania was traveling in South India, he met one devotee named Vasudev, and he requested from Lord Titania that you give me all the sinful, act, sinful reactions of all the people in the universe. But uh, Lord Titania said that is not a difficult job. I can easily liberate everyone in the universe. And we, why you don't have to take the sinful reaction for all the people. He said that if one universe goes back to Godhead, it's like one mustard seed in a bag of mustard seeds. So it's not so significant. But he had, the Prabhupada wrote in the purport, he had more compassion than Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ only delivered his followers. But he was interested in delivering everyone in the material world. So although the Bhagavad Gita is confidential knowledge. So we want to distribute it. So at least the saner section of society, people that are innocent can become devotees. This is the prediction of Lord Chaitanya that the Hare Krishna mantra would be chanted every town and village. In other words, this Hare Krishna movement would be spread all over the world. So when Prabhupada started very, in a very humble way, he had his first storefront temple in New York on 2nd Avenue. Then he went to San Francisco, opened a storefront temple. But his health was declining so he decided to come back to India to recuperate his health so he could preach, go on preaching. So when he was leaving the temple in San Francisco, he said to the fledgling devotees there, whoever was there, that now I'm leaving, I want you to push on this movement. And they were surprised. They were shocked. They didn't even know they were in a movement. But Prabhupada had that vision, Tri Kalagya, devotee is knows past, present, and future. It was predicted by one astrologer that Prabhupada would, uh, oh, and at the age of 70, he would open 108 temples. So Prabhupada had that compassion, and at the order of his Guru Maharaj, he uh, took the risk of leaving Vrindavan at 70 years old to go to America to preach Krishna consciousness. And he wrote the <coughs> commentary and purport, purport translation and commentaries on Bhagavad Gita, and had that printed. And he printed other books also, for so we could distribute the people in this world to the innocent people. There are different kinds of people. The demons are opposed to the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Many countries like Russia, China, especially the 
Muslim countries, they want, they want, they're opposed to the Krishna conscious movement. I think it's some cult or some something bad for the people or against their their own religion. But the Bhagavad Gita is for everyone. It's not a Hindu scripture. You won't find that word anywhere in Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, any Prabhupada's books. There's no such thing. Uh, Vyasadeva didn't write books for Hindus. It's not Hinduism. Even that word came about by some people who were living on the Sindhu River and the Muslims in that area couldn't pronounce that word, so they called them Hindus. So Hinduism came into being. So it's not really a bona fide religion. But we're practicing Sanatana Dharma, or the eternal Dharma of all living entities. Diversu Boy Nitya Krishna Das. So everyone in this world is eternal servant of Krishna. It's like the sun. The sun rises, the sun is shining in America, the sun is shining in China, the sun is shining in India. It's not an American sun, it's not a Chinese sun, it's not an Indian sun. The sun is there for everyone. In the same way, Sanatana Dharma means the eternal occupation, eternal religion for all spirit souls, for all living entities. Even though the whole world is going on under the name of false names and false forms. And people are under this ahamamati, I and mine, conception that I'm American and I'm white or I'm black or I'm yellow or I'm this and that and everything is mine. This is an illusion. No, we're not any of these things. We're a pure spirit soul. So the soul is, is transmigrating from boyhood to youth to old age. And at the time of death, the soul again goes to another body. The soul is so active in this body, so it's a misconception. The time of death, the soul or the life force becomes inactive. We're always active and we always have a body. Always a, so uh, this misconception people have. And they're performing abortions because they think there's no soul and they, that it's not, uh, you're not killing anything. It's just a lump of matter. So you can perform abortions, and kill the baby in the embryo. But if it's not a living entity, then it wouldn't grow, it wouldn't come out. With, uh, with a body and start crying. If you remove a tumor, somebody has cancer, remove a tumor, the tumor doesn't cry. It doesn't have a soul in it. So the baby is not just a lump of matter, a lump of flesh in the womb, but it's actually, the soul is there. And they're committing a murder by performing abortions. And Prabhupada says this abortions and this contraceptives are very degrading, most degrading thing, a most abominable thing in society today. Stopping the uh, soul from uh, coming out in a normal way. But they don't agree with this. They, the scientists say that life is a combination of chemicals. So the chemicals so when they're doing performing abortion, they're just killing the, some chemicals, so they don't feel guilty about it. But we know that there's a law of karma. So if someone performs an abortion, then he has to take birth in the womb of a mother, and never see for every abortion he has to take birth in the womb and never see the light of day for every abortion he performs. And there was one doctor who performed thousands of abortions, became a disciple of Radhanath Swami, and now he's preaching anti-abortion. He could understand that his karma was such he would, was going to have to suffer so much for doing that. So that's another point. But here, 
it describes that this is the most confidential knowledge. And confidential knowledge uh, is also nine chapters of the Bhagavad Gita says this is the most confidential knowledge. Then in the 15th chapter, Krishna says that there are two kinds of living entities, the fallible and infallible. And of the two, uh, the, in the material world, everyone is fallible. In the spiritual world, everyone's infallible. And of the two, the Supreme Lord, he's above the fallible and infallible, and he's worshiped as the greatest personality. And one who understands this will be, uh, understands this without doubting, obtains pure devotional service. This is the most confidential knowledge spoken to Arjuna, O sinless one. Whoever understands this will become wise and his endeavors will attain all perfection. So this is again, repeated again, confidential. And, but it's still, it's, it's like a, Sanatana Goswami describes it like an oyster. An oyster has uh, two shells, one on the top and one on the bottom. So the top shell is Gyan and the bottom shell is Karma. But in the middle is the pearl and that's Bhakti. So the Bhagavad Gita is also like that. The first six chapters deal with Gyan and Karma, and the last six chapters deal with, with Gyan and Karma, or mostly Gyan. But the middle six chapters deal with pure devotional service. So it's there, although the whole Bhagavad Gita deals with pure devotional service, deals with Bhakti, and is meant to make people devotees, still the, uh, those who are uh, not austere, those who are not practicing, it says the foolish living entities can't understand how they accept the body or quit the body due to the modes of material nature. But the, endeavor, but the uh, <coughs> those who have eyes of knowledge can see all this. The endeavoring transcendentalists can see all this clearly. But those whose minds are not developed and not engaged in self-realization cannot see what is taking place even though they try to. So Srila Vyasadev, he did all the research work. And Sukadev Goswami spoke it to Maharaj Prikshit. So the scientists, the philosophers, there's so many people doing so many experiments, so many <coughs> wasting their time trying to understand uh, the nature of the material world, trying to understand uh, so many things. The prophet says in the second canto, Srimad Bhagavan purport, that every possible, humanly possible question is answered in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So it starts out with, uh, <coughs> it's, it's the, from first canto to ninth canto, and so much information is there. It includes the structure of the universe and how the world is going on, how everything is, is created. Lord Brahma is the original creator and how he creates everything and talks about uh, the individual living entities and species, different species of life. Everything is there. It's actually very scientific. The Srimad Bhagavatam is very scientific. It's not simply some, just a religious scripture with so many words that people can't understand. It's not Kaitava Dharma. Most religions are Kaitava Dharma or they're cheating religions. They don't teach people, give people any knowledge, don't give people any satisfaction, don't pe teach people how to love God. They're just uh, a dogmatic ism. There's, uh, you know, Judaism or Catholicism or uh, so many different uh, religions in the world, but people aren't learning how to love God. So it's not true religion. True religion means to love God. The Srila Prabhupada 
Why did you come to America to introduce another religion where there's so many religions already in this country? The prophet said, I didn't come here to, really, to introduce another religion. I came here to teach people how to love God. So this is the... Uh, Krishna says, Tay sam satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam. That I, those who devote me with love and devotion, I give the intelligence to come to me. So, uh, Krishna speaking, Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna to uh, dispel his ignorance. Arjuna was a Katriya, and Katriya's duty is to fight, but on the onset of the, on the beginning of the uh, war of Kutsetra, Arjuna requested Krishna, who had become the chariot driver, Arjuna, to place his chariot in between the two armies so he could see who he had to fight with. So Arjuna became bewildered and saw his friends, teachers, and relatives on opposite side. So naturally, he didn't want to fight with them. But they were willing to fight with him. So the whole Bhagavad Gita is based on Krishna's uh, convincing Arjuna that he should fight. And now he's saying here that now I've told you everything, deliberate on this and do as you wish to do. So, although we are minute spirit soul, and somehow or other we come into the material world by misuse of our independence, love of God is not something that can be forced on anyone. So we have independence, and we have independence to choose whether we want to love God or we want to, whether we want to turn our face away from God. So somehow or other, we made a foolish decision and thought it was better to turn our face away from God and come to the material world and try to be God. So I try to enjoy like God. And Krishna, he's the reservoir of all pleasure, and he's always enjoying his traditional pastimes in Golok Vrindavan. So we should we can enter into those pastimes and serve Krishna, always be a servant, das das sanudas. But somehow we thought it was better that we didn't serve Krishna, that we tried to be Krishna. So we can we are um, came in the material world. So we can't blame Krishna for putting us in the material world. It's not. So to Kailama Shasvatam, the material world, place of misery and suffering, repeated birth and death take place. So it's not Krishna's fault that we come in the material world and suffer. People say, I'm not suffering. But then you say, well, then go. Uh, why are there so many hospitals? Why are there so many medical shops? that people aren't suffering. People, no one goes to the medical shop and says, give me some malaria. If you're not suffering, or give me a cold, or give me a, you know, whatever. So many things can go wrong with this body. There's so many ways we have to suffer. And whatever pleasure, whatever enjoyment in this material world, is just a moment's relief from the suffering. If we can, uh, Understand from the time we wake up in the morning, the time we go to sleep at night, we are experiencing so many different kinds of sufferings. But if we're in good health, if we have a young, strong body, we don't feel the suffering so much. And most young people think that they're enjoying life. But yeah, as you get older and older, your body becomes more and more, uh, uh, more and more fragile and more and more, you become more and more aware of the different kinds of suffering are there. So an intelligent person will say, well, wh will ask, why am I suffering? 
And why am I in this material world? A Tato Brahma Jignasa. This intelligent person inquires why have I come in this material world? And the ant but it's not that it is because of our free will. Minute we have minute free will. If someone uh, comes to attack you, that's your karma. But you have the free will uh, to how you act in this world. If they, when they make a city, they always build a prison house because they know some people will break the law and have to go to prison. That means they misuse their free will. But if someone's intelligent person knows if I break the law, I'll go to prison, then they, they don't do that. So most people, most of the people are uh, law-abiding because they don't want to have to suffer uh, unnecessarily. So this should be understood that free will is there. So Prophet says, um, we should act under the direction of the super soul. When Prabhupada was translating his books, he said the super, he was taking dictation from super soul. One time a reporter asked Srila Prabhupada, can you talk to God? And Prabhupada said, yes. But one of his disciples was there and tried to give some, give some explanation that seemed like it was more logical. The Prabhupada stopped him and said, no, I speak to God. So, Krishna, so Prabhupada was able to take dictation from the super soul so he could write his Bhaktivedanta purports. But we're not on that level. At the level of Mahabhagavat or Nutamadakari, who is uh, free from all material contamination and sees everyone as serving Krishna. The pure devotee, he thinks everyone is serving Krishna except for himself. But in actuality, he's serving Krishna and everyone else is not. But due to his humility, Janata Pisini, Jana, Tura Pisisana, Manina Mandana, Kirtanya Sadari. If one is humble, more humble, more tolerant than a tree, the void of all sense is false prestige. This is the uh, nature of pure devotee. Lord Chaitanya said, Nadana, Nadana, Sundarim, Kavitanda, Ishwari, Mama Jamani, Jamani, Ishwari, Bhagavad Bhakti, Haitukitari. So a pure devotee thinks, I don't want wealth, I don't want a beautiful wife, I don't want many followers. All I want is pure devotional service, birth after birth. So a devotee is not even concerned about getting out of the material world. He's just concerned about serving Krishna. And whether he has to go to heaven, if he goes to heaven but there's no service to Krishna, he thinks it's hell. But if he goes to hell and can still serve Krishna, then he thinks it's heaven. So this is the pure devotee. He's able to take dictation from the super soul. The super soul is accompanying the individual soul and every species of life. So what they call, they say, animal has certain uh, intelligence to do certain things, where to get their food, where to sleep, how to have sex life. This is called instinct or guidance from the super soul. But in human life, we're also uh, being guided by the super soul. But uh, we don't realize it. That the super soul is there. Two birds sitting on the tree. One bird is witnessing. The other bird is eating the fruits. So the witnessing bird is waiting for the uh, bird that's trying to enjoy the fruits to surrender to him. So surrender is the uh, message of Bhagavad Gita. Sarva Dharma Piksha Jaya Mamai Kam Sarva Nama Jaya Aham Tvam Sarva Pama Nyo Moksha Shai Maha Krishna says to surrender unto me, give up of all varieties of religion, including Dharma, Artha, Karma, Moksha, and surrender unto me, I will protect you from all sinful activities. Do not fear. 
And even Sankaracharya in one purport Prabhupada wrote that the Ganges wa water and the Bhagavad Gita are purifying, can purify anyone. And Shankaracharya even said that if one takes, drinks a little Ganges water and reads Bhagavad Gita, he won't have to go to the court of Yamaraj. So this is a surrendered soul. When Ajamil was 88 years old, he had 10 children. And his last child, he named Narayan. So at the time of death, he, uh, time of death creeped up on him. Time factor, time and tide waits for no man. We're all under, Plamar says, we're all under the cruel, crushing hands of time. So at the time of death, he called out to his son, Narayan. And because he had called the holy name of the Lord, that when the Yamadudas came to take him to Yamaraj, the Vishnu Dudas also came there. And they stopped the Yamadudas. They said, this man is sinless now because he chanted the name of Narayan at the time of death. So, um, this is, uh, means he was fully surrendered. He surrendered to Narayan. And actually, he had been a pure de devotee, he had been a devotee in the beginning of his life. He worshipped Narayan. So at the time of death, he called out his son's name, Chaitanya Bhagavat says, but at that, actually, he remembered Narayan from his childhood. So he didn't get liberated the Immediately, he went back into his body, uh, renounced his family life, went to hard wire, performed pure devotional service, and then he went back to Godhead. So, um, this is the highest stage of human life. And people should understand that human life uh, is uh, very special. There are 8,400,000 species of life. But only in human life can one become Krishna conscious. So Lord Rishabhadev told his 100 sons that they should not waste their human form of life in sense gratification, which is available for the hogs and dogs that eat stool. You see that in Vrindavan. Other places in the world you don't see that. But you see the child is passing stool and the hog is waiting to eat that, because that's his food, he likes that. When you get a hog body, you, you like to eat stool. But when you have a human body, that's abominable, detestable. So, the human form of life is the, meant for self-realization, for understanding our eternal relations with Krishna. If we misuse our human form of life, then we have to take birth again and again and continue in the bondage. It's like we're bound up in the material world like the type like being ha like being tied hand and foot with tight ropes. And they can't get out of the material world. But it says Yesha Deve Prabhaktir Yesha Deve Tataguru Dasyaita Patrita Hi Arta Praksanate Mahamanaha Only to those great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master or are all the imports of Vedic knowledge automatically revealed. So the the purpose of all the Vedic knowledge is to bring one to Krishna consciousness. Even though uh, the Vedas deal with so many different subject matters, the Krishna says, Sarasacham, Ridishani Visto, Matas Matir, Gyanapavamcha, Vedantakrit Veda Veda Evacham, that I am the compiler, of, I am the knower of the Vedas, the compiler of the Vedas, knower of the Vedas, and the goal of the Vedas. So Krishna is the Supreme Personality Godhead, Ishvara Parama, Krishna, Satchirananda, Vigraha, Anandya Govinda, 
Sarvakarna Karnam. Krishna is the cause of all causes. And the surrender to Krishna, that is the uh, highest perfection of life. The demons, they worship the demigods. If we read the Krishna book, 10th Canon of Bhagavatam, there was one demon, his name was Rikishura. And he didn't know, he wanted to get a benediction, but he didn't know who to worship, Vishnu, Brahma, or Shiva. So he met Narada Muni, and Narada Muni told him, if you want to get a benediction very quickly, then you should worship Lord Shiva. So he did that. He started worshiping Lord Shiva. He only ate a handful of ashes for one year. And then Lord Shiva didn't appear to him, so he started cutting off. He started, he, he started a fire, a sacrificial fire. And he started cutting off the flesh from his body and throwing it in the fire. And still Lord Shiva didn't come. Then he went and took bath in a river, and while he was still wet, he was going to cut off his head and throw it in the fire. Well, Lord Shiva then, then he did appear, and he asked Lord Shiva, is called Ashutosh. He's easily angered, easily pleased. He said, you don't need to do all these things, torture yourself in this way. Just say, offer me a little Ganges water and some bilva leaves. And then he said, okay. Now you please me, ask for a boon. So he said, okay, I want the benediction that when I put my hand on anyone's head, it will crack. So Lord Shiva <coughs> is not accept such people as his devotee. He gives them their benedictions, but he doesn't tell them whether it's good or bad for them. So this demon, Brikashura, wanted to Test the, test the benediction. So he started chasing Lord Shiva to put his hand on his head. So Lord Shiva went all over the universe and he couldn't get free from this demon. Then he went to Vaikuntha and Lord Vishnu assumed the form of a, a what looked like a Shivite or the Rakshavit, and he spoke to the demon and told the demon that this Lord Shiva is a liar. He hasn't really given you any benediction. Now you just put your hand on your head, and when nothing happens, you can kill that liar. So the demon forgot that he had a benediction. He put his own hand on his head, and it cracked, and he dropped dead. So this is one example. There are many stories like this, where people misuse their human form of life for getting sense gratification, for getting useless benedictions to do so many things. It's like Rani Kashipu reading the seventh canto. He performed austerity, standing on his toes for 100 years with his hands in the air. He didn't have a body left. The ants ate all his body. He only had his bones. Somehow he kept his life air in his bones. Then Lord Brahma came and rejuvenated his body and said, you can ask for a boon. So Rani Kashipu said, I want to become immortal. It means I want to never have to die. But everybody has to take birth. Everyone has to get diseased. Everyone has to get old. Everyone has to die. No one can stop that. Even Lord Brahma said, I can't give you that kind of benediction. But, so, uh, but Lord Rani Kashipu uh, made so many conditions that that seemingly he thought he became immortal. That he wouldn't be killed on the land or in the water or in the sky or by human beings or by the animals or by demigods or demons or so many things. So the Lord came to baffle Rani Kashipu and ultimately killed him. Because no one, no one can actually become immortal or live forever. And why do, why, why, why do we want to live forever? We don't want to stay in this body any longer than we have to. So in this way, uh, 
people are misusing their human form of life. And here, uh, uh, the uh, Arjuna has the choice whether to fight or not fight. After hearing the words of Krishna, finally he agrees to fight. And uh, somehow or other, we had the Sukriti from past pious activities. That way we heard about Krishna consciousness, we decided to take the Krishna consciousness by our using our free will. So people, all of, so many millions, millions, billions of people in the world, they have all have the choice to become, take the Krishna consciousness or not to take the Krishna consciousness. And people are envious at the Krishna con devotees because not working hard like they are working. Men and people have to work so hard in this world to get enough money to maintain themselves. So they think we're, we're a parasite in society because we're not working hard like them, working like asses. The ass carries a heavy load to get a little grass at the end of the day. There's grasses there everywhere. They can just take some grass, but they don't realize that. They think they have to carry this heavy load. In the same way, we're say, people are saying to us, we're just parasites and we're just uh, freeloaders in society. And, but they see us living so nicely. We get about everything we need. We have nice prasadam, nice temple. So people become, are envious. So we say to them that you come and join us. If you don't, if you don't want to have to work hard in the material world and struggle through life just to pay your bills and pay the taxes and pay everything and come and join us. This temple is called Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha means no without. Vai means without and Vaikuntha anxiety. So the devotees are living an anxiety-free life pretty much so. Especially brahmacharis and sannyasis. Householders, they have to uh, make a little endeavor to support themselves. But they should only take what is necessary, the bare necessities of life. So, uh, we have, there's two alternatives. It's called prayas or nivritti marg and privritti marg, or the path of sense gratification and the path of liberation. So, the path of uh, sense gratification is nothing but a hardship and trouble. And there's just suffering more and more uh, just like uh, Bhagavad Gita says in the beginning, it's like poison, but the end it's like nectar. But for the materialist, the beginning is like nectar, but the end is like poison. So someone goes to a bar, gets intoxicated, take, he feels, the, he gets some nectar, but the end result is poison because he had, he lost his intelligence, he went crazy, did crazy things, and the next day he, he's sick. So where is he? Uh, what's the benefit of that? You uh, want to enjoy a little bit, but then the end result is you suffer. So we're telling people that they uh, should come and try and be Krishna conscious and live a peaceful life. Prabhupada has asked, what if everybody in the world became Krishna conscious? He said the whole world would be peaceful and happy. Because Krishna conscious devotees, we don't eat meat, we don't take intoxication, we don't have illicit sex, and we don't gamble. It's this wholesale slaughter of animals to be, that's causing so many crisis in the world. Animal slaughter, especially cow killing. So many natural disasters are happening every single day. And it's a direct reaction, especially war. There has to be war as long as animal killing, animal slaughter is going on. Because the wholesale slaughter of animals, the cruelty, suffering we're causing animals, is the reaction is that the human beings have to suffer. And uh, war is more suffering than uh, is most kind of suffering. People have to go to war and suffer so much and even innocent people 
have to suffer in wars nowadays. So we're telling people they should not uh, misuse our human form of life. Krishna says, Tad Vidi Paripatena Paripatena Sevaya Upidek Janti Jagiyanas Yanas Tapa Darshanaha. So the beginning of spiritual life is that once you accept the Guru, and here Prabhupada says, the individual is always under the Lord's control. Therefore, one's duty is to surrender. And that, <coughs> wrong one. It says that the, to accept the instructions the Supreme Personality God in, such instructions comes also through the spiritual master, the bona fide representative of Krishna. So, Guru, Ashraya, acceptance of a bona fide spiritual master, that's the first step in spiritual life so that we can, he can guide you on the path of pure devotional service. So when we accept the Guru, Guru Krishna Prasadi by Bhakti Lata Beach, the Guru takes your karma and you have to agree to chant 16 rounds of Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare and follow the four regular principles. In this way, uh, we can live peacefully in a spiritual life instead of the, the alternative life of sense gratification, which is nothing but uh, misery and suffering. There's no real p pleasure there. Whatever pleasure they get from sex life or from movies, from television, from uh, so many things, it's just a moment's relief from the suffering. So rather than uh, go for the will of the whisk or the pie in the sky or horse eggs, the uh, illusion that somehow I can enjoy in this world, we can take the Krishna consciousness and uh, understand the reality of human form of life. So we're distributing Bhagavad Gita, and Krishna says it's the most confidential knowledge, but still because we have compassion and we want to make people Krishna conscious, also spread this movement, we give people the opportunity to not misuse their human form of life. Therefore, we're making this confidential knowledge available to those who are innocent and those who are uh, willing to at least uh, understand that there's some alternative in this world, that they don't have to uh, live the way they're living now, but they can change their lifestyle. And we see over and over again testimonies from people who got books either directly or indirectly and then had a crisis in their life and then they started reading Bhagavad Gita and they started going to the temple and associating with devotees and eventually uh, they, they became initiated devotees and they became, they took up Krishna consciousness fully. So this is going on it's the purpose of distributing Bhagavad Gita. It's like a time bomb. And Prabhupada wanted it, all his books being distributed. With time bomb, uh, someone may get a Bhagavad Gita and not read it, but they'll put it on the bookshelf and someone else will open it up and read it and become a devotee. So in either case, uh, we're distributing Bhagavad Gita freely to all over to uh, to educate the people in this world that sense gratification is not the highest goal of life, which is propagated in Kali Yuga. Everyone is suffering so much, and in other ages, people didn't suffer as much as in Kali Yuga. But Kali Yuga is the age of quarrel and hypocrisy, and people are uh, electing the bad leaders and uh, taking bad advice from the wrong people and going in the wrong direction. So everybody, Krishna says, whatever you think about at the time of death, that's what you will attain. Yam yam vapi smaram bhavam. So people are accepting a leader who has a stone boat and everyone is aborting that stone boat. So when the stone boat, when you get on a stone boat, what happens? It sinks. So everyone's on the royal road to hell in this world, but unless they take the Krishna consciousness, then they can be saved from that and not misuse the human form of life.
Well, we can stop there. Do anybody have any questions? Question man is not here today. So everyone, thank you all for coming. Those on Radio Land, thank you for listening. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Antara Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai.